Hi, greeting to every one of you in the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Today, I just want to take this privilege to wish all the fathers across the globe. And today, we would like to discuss something on the topic called Faithful Father. The topic I said, Faithful Fathers. Let us look to God in prayer. Loving God, Father, as we ponder upon your word on the topic, Faithful Fathers, Lord, help us to understand more about what faithfulness is. And Father God, help us to ponder upon your loving kindness. Speak to us in a very still manner. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. As I already say that the topic is Faithful Fathers, let us understand what faithfulness is talking all about. When we look in the uh, dictionary, it says that faithfulness is something like um, uh, it adherence one's faithfulness. Or, uh, uh, faithfulness is defined the quality of being faithful. So that is what it is called about faithfulness. Let us also understand that faithful faithfulness implies steadfast adherence to a person at or to a thing which one is bound as by an ought or an obligations. Loyalty implies divitations, allegiance to a person, cause institutions, etc which one fails moral, morally bound to support or defense, constant suggestions, freedom from the frickleness in affections or loyalties. Stance implies a strong allegiance to one's principle or purpose as not to be turned aside by any causes resolved, stress, unwaving determinations of an in adhering to one's personal ends and or aims. When we look at the other synonyms of the faithfulness, it includes like a dedicated, indicate like steadfast, devoted, dependable, accurate, true, dutiful, careful, etc. Let us see something about like faithfulness in the Bible. The Bible teaches us that faithfulness comes from a trusted loyalty. When we look in the book of Hebrews, it says that now faith is confident in what we hope for the assurance about what we do not see. Once again, I read it. Now faith is a confident in what we hope for an assurance about what we do not see. As a Christian, it is important to be faithful to God. It is one of the things to simply believe in Him, but another to be faithful to Him which means to be faithful to God. The most important father figure in the Bible is God, as we all know that. And the father is the ultimate uh, role model for all human that. His love, his kindness, patience, wisdom, and protection are very impressive or impossible standards to live up to for up to now he is also God is also a forgiving and an understanding answering father for to all our prayers and never give them expert guidance so that we can or man can you know a family can wants to be a God is a God who is faithful understanding, being there morally, emotionally, protectively in all the circumstances of our lives. I just want to encourage our fathers across the globe today by taking an example from a Bible called a man, Adam. Adam, we all know that he is the first man 
that God created in his likeness. So let us see something about his uh, nature or how uh, some lessons from him. When we look in the book of Genesis chapter 1 verse 27, we already know that God created mankind in his own image. In the image of God, he created them male and female. That is what we can find in the book of Genesis chapter 1 verse 27. This verse is talking about the fatherhood, the Bible record. And Adam had God, Cain and Abel, as his sons. And apart from Cain and Abel, they were also some other sons and daughters. And perhaps this is the best lesson that we can, you know, uh, learn something from Adam. Because we know that Adam has disobeyed God. God created Adam and placed him in the Garden of Eden and strictly prohibited or taught him not to pluck any fruit from the middle of the tree, that is a tree of life and death or knowledge. So what happened is that Adam and Eve disobeyed God by plucking that fruit and they ate it. Now, when they disobeyed God, they have to definitely face their consequences and what consequences they have made, what they have faced, we just wanted to know. As I said, Adam's story revolves in the consequences of disobeying or making wrong decision. So likewise, in this world, every man are imperfect being. Every human being, be it father, be it mother, be sons and daughters, whoever it might be, every man have a tendency of making something or going wrong at some point of our life. Here, we already know that Adam and Eve, because of the disobedience, we know that they were been, after knowing that they uh, have committed sins, after plucking the fruit in the middle of the tree, they get to know. The, uh, the knowledge, the knowledge of uh, good and evil. After plucking the fruit and after eating this, not, uh, Adam came to his realization about good and bad. And that's where they started to hid themselves among the leaves when God came to visit them. So what happened is that when we look in the book of Genesis chapter 3, verse 23 and 24, here it says that so that so the Lord God banished him from the Garden of Eden to work the ground from which he had been taken. After he drove them out, he placed on the east side of the Garden of Eden cherubim and a flaming sword flashing back and forth to guard the way of the tree of life. This is clearly written in the book of Bible. Now, since Adam and Adam have uh, disobeyed God by eating the fruit or the tree of knowledge or the tree of life, now Adam and Eve is being sent out or barred from the paradise that was in the Garden of Eden. And in the end, we know that God sent them out from that garden to work on the earth that where he was taken to form him. Adam, we already know that he is taken from the dust. God created a mud and then he created human form and then he bred his nostril into it. What we learn is that like sometimes, as I already say, that Adam's story also shows that there are sometimes some consequences of our action. As we human beings are imperfect, sometimes because of our indecisive decisions that which we made, we face the consequences and we should be ready to accept that one instead of like um, pouring over on somebody or blaming on somebody. But the fathers must also sometimes punish the children to teach important lesson. See, punishing our earthly children doesn't mean that we don't love them. Like the Father God love us and punish us because of the consequences of our sin, it is also right for the earthly father to um, 
punish the kids or punish their sons and daughters to let them come to the sense to choose between right and wrong or good or evil. So we also already know that the first man, the first, uh, first human ma father, Adam, had an example to follow except for God. Now, regrettably that he strayed away from God's loving and God had set an example by punishing him out or banishing him out from the gar Garden of Eden and ultimately like he had to face the consequences. What is the consequences? We already know that he was left to deal with the tragedy of his son Cain, murdering his other um, son Abel. And Adam had to face this because he had fallen, uh, he has not obeyed the word of God and kind out of uh, jealousy, he killed his own brother Abel. Adam has much to teach us in today's fathers about the consequences of our actions and the absolute, you know, necessity of obeying God. Today, we should also understand that it is the father who have to be very much Mm, understandable if if our father or any father of a family obeys God's word faithfully and understand and follows God's will or God's word that we are destined to receive the blessings of God but when we disobey God definitely we have to face our own consequences that which we have made we can learn that God is looking for fathers that mm, who freely choose, you know, to obey him and to su submit to his love. Today, God is calling our fathers of this global pa father in this global world today that God is looking for a man. God is looking for a father who choose to freely obey him and submit him to his love. Secondly, he is also looking for a father of integrity, leaving the knowledge and have nothing to hide from God's side. He is looking for a man who lives with integrity and there is nothing to hide from God's side. Instead of blaming others, God is looking for a godly father who takes responsibility of his own failures and shortcomings. Today, therefore, I encourage at this day when the world or when the church is celebrating Father's Day, are you a man or are you a man who takes up your own uh, responsibility of your own uh, of your own indecisive decision making or are you a man who put a blame on your wife or are you a man who put a, a blame on your children if you are in that category today i encourage you be a responsible father be a prayerful man be a godly father because your wife and your children are looking over you, looking upon you. You are one of the protective father. You not only provide, but you are also a father who lead your family to God. If you are a true follower of God, your kids will definitely follow you. So I encourage all the fathers across the globe that be a faithful father, be a faithful husband to your wife, be a faithful father to your kids, to your children, be a faithful grandfathers to your grandchildren because they are looking up to you to set an example. As we have already learned from the story of Adam that the first man, the, earth, the first human father made um, he, he committed sins by disobeying God, so he had to face his consequences by losing one of his son. Son killed his own son. That was his consequences. Let us understand that. And let us humble ourselves, acknowledge our weakness, and be a faithful father. Let us look to God and pray. Eternal God our Father, we thank you so much. We bless your name because you are worthy to be praised. Your name is to be honored, and you are our Abba Father, who is the Almighty God, the Creator, the Sustainer, the Giver of Life. At this point of time, Father, I continually pray for all the fathers across the globe who are watching or listening to this message. Bless them. 
help them become a responsible father help them become a responsible and faithful husband to their wife and to their kids father god and also i pray for the people or men and women who are about to become father in the future that they will take the lesson from the bible which you have taught us clearly from the book of genesis about the story of adam lord bless us together in jesus name we pray amen as we have listened the word of god let us learn something and let's follow the word of god be a blessing father to your children be a blessing faithful husband to your wife. God bless you. See you.